Once upon a time in ancient Greece, a king's brother was wronged. His wife had been stolen from him by a Trojan prince. The king, in his fury and delusion, even withheld a young woman from her father, who pleaded for her life back. The pleading man was a worshipper of the god Apollo. To punish the king, Apollo sent arrows of pestilence into the king's city. But the king had ire with many more, even people of his own ranks. He had even angered the great warrior Achilles, who swore to withhold his fighting power from any further battles. The gods kept interfering with the king and Zeus sent him a dream. The king dreamt that now was the time to strike. The time to right the wrong that was done to his brother several years ago. He shall take his people and his ships to conquer Troy now. And so they did. As they stood before Troy, the goddess Iris brought forth a message to the armies. To stand tall, to fight the battle of their lives with valor and bravery. And this is where we are left off in the story of the Iliad. Hi, I'm Francis, and I make art supply and art videos here on YouTube. And right now I am going to show you the next four art pieces of the Iliad illustration series I'm currently doing. If you are unaware of the story in the Iliad, that is no problem. I will tell you everything you need to know. This little summary was a very short version of what happened so far. But we will just continue and I'll tell you what you need to know whenever that moment in the story arrives. The illustration I am working on now is the illustration of the Tychoscopy. I was unaware that this is a thing. Apparently when in a play or a book someone is describing events from a high vantage point that the viewer or reader otherwise would not be privy to see, then that description is called Tychoscopy. In this case, Helen who is the wife who was stolen back then from the brother of the Greek king. She is describing to us the reader who is currently present on the battlefield. She is also telling us where these people come from, which is why I tried a little children's book illustration that would pinpoint where the location of these key players is. The map you can see in the background is that of the Mediterranean Sea. Because it is the Tychoscopy and Helen is describing us these events from the top of the Trojan city walls, I decided to end the map not in a straight line but in these battlements. Each of these key players gets a different color and the background of their windows will be tinted in that color. Everything so far is done with acrylic inks as well as watercolor and now I got out the Faber-Castell polychromos and attributed a different color to each key player. I'm also adding details to the little figurines. I always have the Iliad handy because in the back of the book there is a list of each and every figure mentioned in the story. That is very helpful if you, for example, want to look up Ajax and see where he is coming, from, where he comes from. The polychromos were not vibrant enough. I believe a children's book illustration has to be very colorful, especially if there is information to be conveyed. And therefore I got out the Uniposca pens just to give it that extra pop of color. I also went bold with the borders and line work with a black Uniposca pen. And then the little Tychoscopy piece is finished. Now I skipped over Paris's entrancement because I knew this was supposed to be realistic and realistic paintings need a bit more energy. I skipped ahead to an abstract piece I was going to do with potato prints. I had two potatoes that already sprouted and if I am to believe the internet then you are not supposed to eat them anymore. So I used them as a printmaking tool. Printmaking is such a fun thing. You can print with so many different materials. 
and each material will give a special look to your piece and its outcome. If you ever want to try that out, the only thing you really should be conscious of are your cuts. Your cuts should be straight down into the potato because later on you will cut orthogonally to your previous cut work. And the more rectangular your cuts, the better your printing outcome. What I am depicting with these potato prints is the arrow of Pandaros. Let's talk about how the story continues for a bit. Last, we had the Tychoscopy shortly after Iris brought forth the message of getting ready for war. However, Paris, the prince of Troy, who is responsible for all of this because he took Helen. He decides he's gonna do a noble thing for once and says to Helen's ex-husband, Menelaus, Menelaus, not all of our men have to die today on the battlefield. Let's duel and that will decide who is the winner, who will get Helen and then we will avoid unnecessary bloodshed. Which is a noble thing to do, if he would actually go through with it. But I'm skipping ahead. They duel and something happens that is not very vividly described. Paris is entranced by Aphrodite. He is about to lose this duel and is entranced. And no description of what this entrancement means, but he is unable to continue to fight and therefore he would have lost. <laughs> the Greeks think so anyway, but uh, there is general confusion with all parties involved. The gods are meddling quite a bit. Athena appears in the camp of Troy and tells Pandaros to let go of his arrow, ultimately knowing that this will hinder a truce. In fact, it will probably mean that the fighting will begin. So this is what this abstract potato print piece is supposed to illustrate. Pandaros letting go of his arrow, ending any chance of truce there was. Okay, this was fun. This looks, well, it's, it's abstract and I think it's impressive, even though there is really not a lot of skill involved. So this is Pandaros arrow. He is breaking the truce. This is the camp of Troy, um, overlapping with the camp of Greece. They are towards the beach. Now I will start with the piece on the entranced Paris. It is going to be a bit more realistic and not as abstract. Let's see what we can come up with. For Paris's entrancement, I went with a grey-scaled portrait of a man. This is a portrait completely in black and white, values only. It is very helpful, especially for a dramatic pose like this, where Paris looks towards the sky or up above him, where probably Aphrodite is, and Aphrodite is, as we mentioned, entrancing him is out of his mind with whatever Aphrodite is doing to him. Maybe just gazing upon this beautiful goddess was too much for him. The only color I add is this acrylic ink because it is Aphrodite, goddess of sensuality and beautiful things. I went with a very disturbingly deep pink. I just used the acrylic magenta the way it is, didn't mix it with anything and let it stream down his eyes as if it was tears running down his face. I lost a lot of footage, so bam, there it is. <laughs> I don't know where the footage went. I also don't know where the footage of this next one you will see in a second went. The next piece is again Athena meddling with the battlefield she is giving superhuman strength to the omidus 
I don't know where the footage went where I did all this groundwork but I used gouache again and I used black and white with a hint of indigo. I'm just now starting with the face and the interesting part so you didn't miss that much. So Athena is whispering to the Omidus, giving him this extraordinary strength. And Athena is wicked. She is a war strategist. She knows what she's doing. And in the Iliad, the gods are meddling so much with the poor humans, they don't stand a chance. But Diomedes has such a strength that he even injures Ares as well as Aphrodite. So he injures two gods, which is an impressive feat. Once upon a time, your girl also caught COVID for the first time. After two and a half years, it hit me like a train. That first variant of the painting where I lost the footage of, how I got there, that sat in my sketchbook for a month. <laughs> because first I was on vacation and then I caught COVID on my vacation and it, it hit me like a friggin' train. I was out. But I am better now and I am continue, continuing to create lots of art at the moment. I missed creating so much that now I am on a roll. I am painting every day, which is nice. What you saw me use right now was the Unipose pens, And now I'm switching to the Polychromos from Father Castell. I'm sticking with this dark blue shade. I only use the dark blue to get the details in. And that monochromatic color scheme is supposed to show that for the Omidus there truly is only Athena and her words of encouragement in that moment. He is going into a rage and not a lot except for his one goal which is to destroy the enemies is in his head. All in all I'm very happy how this is going so far. The illustration of the Iliad it is a bit slower than I would have wished but I'm very happy how it is turning out. That is where we leave it now with this fourth piece of the Iliad illustrations. Let's have a quick flip through and comments and likes are as always appreciated. I love hearing from you and I hope to see you in the next video. You can